Hi everybody. Now for Bio 281 Animal Diversity, part of your requirements is to handle live specimens and in order to test you on this we ask you to do an insect collection. So this week we're demonstrating some techniques that you can use to capture insects right in your backyard. So we are demonstrating the sweep net and the pitfall trap. Now, we expect you to be able to get yourself some sweep nets. This is not going to be very expensive. You can make your own. So I'm just going to tell you how I made this. I went into my wardrobe and I took two wire hangers, held them together, forced them into a fairly round shape, and tie strap them together. Then I went to excellent stores and I bought some king size pillowcases, um, $18 for a pair, I think they were in sale. And I tie, I stitched those onto the wire frame. All right, so I basically folded the lip of the pillowcase over and I just used a simple running stitch because that and hemming are the two only stitches I know. Then I straightened out the bent part of the wire hanger and I used tie straps to hook it on to a mop handle. The mop handle cost $8 at a hardware. And then finally I made everything secure with some duct tape, which was like $13 a roll. So for $30 to $40 I made four of these for the department and they have been lasting for about three years now All right so it's not very expensive it's not very high tech and this is something that you can use to capture your insects as we will demonstrate now there's a technique to using a sweep net you do not simply oh there's a bug swipe and you caught it that's not how you do this this is meant to be a semi-quantifiable technique of sampling. So what you do, you actually can measure the distance that you're going to sweep for, right? You can pace yourselves, you know that, um, like if you're short like me, I have a 30 centimeter pace. So that means if I walk 10 steps, that's 300 centimeters, right? So I will be able to quantify the distance that I've swept for. Or you could sweep for a certain amount of time. Now, in um, the field of pest control, um, crop pest management, they use sweep nets a lot to quantify how many insect pests they find in a field of crops, right? We use it just to get an idea of the diversity and a, sm well, a slight quantitative measure of how many insects there are in a particular terrestrial environment. So what sweep netting will do is actually sample the number of insects or the types of insects in the upper vegetation layer. So I will now demonstrate the appropriate way to sweep net. Okay, so you're holding your net, so the mouth of the net is going to be facing forward, right? And the mouth of the net has to also be perpendicular to the ground. So if the ground is flat, the mouth of the net is on top, right? Perpendicular at 90 degrees. You are holding your net securely with both hands and you are sweeping, then you flip and you sweep the other direction. So sweep, flip, sweep. That's one sweep of your net. Now, when you walk, you, as you take your steps forward, you do one sweep with every step, right? So one sweep with every step. So I'm actually going to hold it a little closer to me, and here we go. One, one step, one, one step. And you make a regular movement, and you sweep. Now when you're done, you fold the mouth of the net over so whatever is in the barrel of the net is not going to escape. You cluster, you hold it in your hand like this, 
and then you get your sample bag and you're going to invert the net into your sample bag right so this is a king size pillowcase so it uses a really big sample bag you can use a normal twin size pillowcase and use a smaller sample bag that might be a little bit easier for you to manipulate so now we're going to go out into the field and demonstrate how you can use your sweep net to catch some flying insects okay so again what you want to do is to ensure that the mouth of your net is touching the vegetation because you're going to have a lot of bugs hiding in the vegetation so we're going to do our sweep we're going to do 10 steps with two sweeps each right so let's go It's a lovely rainy day so our net is very wet right now we take this high-tech piece of equipment here and we are going to empty whatever we caught in this net into the bag now this is biology so it never works out right the first time the second time or the third time what we're doing today is just demonstrating what you would need to do until you catch something. So, you're going to empty the net, belly of the net, into your plastic bag. And in case you're wondering, yes, we're getting the lovely fresh cut grass smell. You're hearing some swamp birds off in the distance. If we catch a bug, it'll be a different story. We know that there are bugs around because we've been seeing butterflies flying around all day. Eek. I've caught a lot of grass. Yes, I got stuff. <laughs> uh, okay. So we've emptied the net more or less. And if I can pass the net to one of my trusty assistants. Right, so we're going to have to clean that off and dry it up and seal the bag. And if we zoom into the bag, you're going to see in here, oh, we caught a whole bunch of stuff. I'm seeing some flies i'm seeing some grasshoppers lots of grasshoppers i'm seeing some ants a couple of wasps some bush bugs okay yeah, so we have a whole a whole bunch of things in just that one sweep we caught so many things I think definitely in future we're going to have to make sure that we ask them to not cut the grass for the first month of the semester when we're doing this course because this is the most things we've seen. Oh, there's even a spider, a lovely spider. So what we will do, we will show you a close-up of what's in the bag so you can get an idea of what we caught in that single sweep. I'm seeing a ladybug, several ladybugs. This is awesome. <laughs> so this is the first time we've actually caught this many things in a sweep net on this little patch of grass. And that's probably because it's a lovely rainy day and also because the grass is high. 
so I was wrong science can't work out right on the first try okay so we're going to be using another high-tech piece of equipment called a pitfall trap where we just took a cup like this right this is just our marking pole and we put it just below the surface of the soil so any crawling insects would fall into the cup that holds some preserving fluid that we'll speak about in a little bit so in this trap we baited it with glycerol and ethanol mix so whatever's caught in there is going to be dead okay so this is our marker telling us where we should look for our trap so we'll find it and if we go down to the bottom here i found a trap and i'm already seeing one very large insect and there's a frog a very dead frog a dragonfly and a bunch of other small insects so i am not going to empty this one because it may be a bit smelly um we'll probably empty it on the inside and keep this frog for our labs for future um but there are a lot of insects in here right and these would be different from what we caught with the sweep net because these are crawling insects going over the surface of the soil falling into the trap okay so this cup this pitfall trap was a bit of a hunt because our marker fell over so we found it and in this one we have we baited this one with ethanol and soap and in this one i'm seeing a caterpillar a really lovely caterpillar which makes sense because we're seeing hundreds of butterflies flying around and there's also a large cricket in here All right so what we will do when we go to the lab is empty this out wash it out pick out all of the insects all of the bugs that we caught and preserve them for later use okay so for some variation we also use a tin can and this trap was baited with just soap and water so because we can't see what's in here i'm very gingerly going to empty it out into a sample bag gingerly because i don't want another frog surprise you don't know what's going to happen here so you can see the virtue of the transparent cups okay so we'll take this inside and wash it out properly and we got some ants many ants in this one all right so one of the things that i hope you no notice was that we caught mainly two different types of insects using two different sampling strategies using the sweep net we caught low flying bugs right and using the pitfall trap we caught crawling organisms and i'm saying organisms because remember we caught a frog right so these are two strategies that you can use to capture organisms in your backyard so what we're doing now we're sorting through what we found in our sweep net we took the entire sample bag and popped it into the freezer to slow everything down and to well kill everything that is mainly because um, we don't want the bugs escaping and flying around the lab and everybody in here panicking or anything like that we want to be able to handle the insects properly before we preserve them for our later use so We've emptied it out into a tray against a white background so we could see everything very clearly. And my lovely assistant, Kyle, is very happily picking out all of the bugs that we caught in the sample. So these are some of the insects that we've caught in our sweep net. Firstly, we have a very tiny baby grasshopper belonging to the order Orthoptera. Um, as we know, this, this grasshopper is going to get fairly large. Um, it'll need to grow a few months before it becomes the size that would alarm you if it hopped into your house. We have a beautiful spider, an absolutely beautiful spider, right? So you remember that spiders are not insects, 
they are they are arachnids but they're very closely related to the grass to the insects we have here um, uh, the best description I could give for this is a true bug this belongs to the order Hemiptera right these true bugs are the classic um, have a classic body pattern of the insect right we have a wasp right wasps belong to the diptera which is the same group that you would find flies and bees in and we have a few plant hoppers a couple of plant hoppers as well so this is actually a lovely diversity um we're seeing several different insect orders just from one single sweep net and that is quite a lesson to us don't be afraid of high grass when you have to do your insect collections and you have to collect your bugs for your final project don't be afraid of going into some high grass to do a sweep net or to leave um, a pitfall trap because you'd be quite astonished at what you would get so now we're clearing one of the pitfall traps I'm using another high-tech device, a simple tea strainer, but um, you're probably want to, going to want to reserve one for exclusive lab use. I doubt your mom will want this back in her kitchen when we're done. So we're just emptying out what we caught, including our little crapple friend. Okay, so I'm going to rinse. So remember, this was ethanol and glycerol. So we're just ensuring that everything that was caught is washed into our strainer. We're going to empty it out into a tray. Ah, oops, sorry. <laughs> everything out into a tray. To see what we put. So we have another spider, beautiful spider, a baby Bufo Marinus, right, Bufo Marinus as we know is the crapo, it's a little itty bitty one, okay, and you know these guys get pretty big, and these are the ones that you, if you have dogs, you want to be wary of your dogs and these in the yard because behind the eye here they have these parotid glands that they secrete a neurotoxin as a defense mechanism so when your dog licks them and starts to froth at the mouth and vomit it's because of that neurotoxin so we caught a lovely crapple and we caught a cricket as well right so when I see one of these guys, I just want to hold it up, hold it up to my mouth and scream in its ear. Um, and then that's the bit of bush. And that's pretty much it for this this pitfall trap. Oh, this is um this is a little beetle. This is probably a lighting a, one of the lighting bug lighting bugs. Which are absolutely gorgeous. Right? And remember we and we have a couple more beetles here. So you've seen a different type of insect from what we what we caught in the sweep net. In the sweep net we saw more low flying and hopping insects. And in this one we're seeing crawling things like beetles, the crickets, the frog, and um, in another one of our of our traps we caught um, a caterpillar, pretty big caterpillar, 
and um, some more crawling bugs. So two different types of bugs, bugs of different habits, caught by two different techniques in the same habitat.